Hi, I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Linda Crover. I'm Susan Lloyd. And today is Tuesday, January 10th. We are recording at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. And we welcome Simon for their first solo venture. <laughs> Producing all things LGBTQ. Yay. And we're, we're going to start with a bit of trivia. I'm not going to disclose who did or did not get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, but as I said, I, I was really missing the celebrity gossip and the celebrity trash, because Linda hasn't had a lot recently. So when I was looking at the morning sort of did you know question of the day, and it was, did you know these celebrities had LGBTQ plus parents? I'm like, yes. And I found a, both a parent and a child who fits that profile. Both the parent and child were both married to LGBTQ plus spouses. And not only are they major, significant gay icons, they are legends on their own in both stage, screen, and music. Who might, who be, they? Who might be the dynamic duo? So looking at events, the, the first thing that I want to put out is that Outright Vermont is looking at launching a queer BIPOC group. This would be specifically for LGBTQ plus youth who are black indigenous people of color, which in Vermont, that's sort of a unique category. So finding a, a place where they are safe and you know they can talk about those peer issues is going to be wonderful. Rainbow Umbrella, you've got the women's discussion group. We do. Book discussion group. Yep. And you've been teasing us that there might be some event coming up in January? Yes, January 27th. There's going to be a poetry reading at 6.30 at the um, Senior Center. OK. Is it also going to be available online? Yes. All right. Momentum, I noticed that they finally posted it that this Sunday, the 15th. So if you're watching it on Saturday night, get up to go get coffee. <laughs> 11 o'clock at Bohemian Bakery here in Montpelier. Fox Market, looking at their happenings for January, they're starting their Saturday night specialty dinners. They've got special events going on. Take a look at their website, Facebook page, because you may find something of interest other than just stopping and grabbing great sandwiches for lunch. Social Tinkering Rutland Plus. They've made a commitment that they're going to do a monthly social event for the LGBTQ plus community. But you need to go onto their Facebook website to see what the event is for that month. Or you can subscribe to their newsletter, which would let you know. Safe Space, this is one of the programs at the Pride Center. They're continuing their rural provider training series. I attended the one for this month which was on gender inclusive language and pronouns. Oh. It's only an hour, so it moves really quickly. It was a fascinating process, because you've got this menagerie of providers for whom some of them are very well versed in the issue, and some they're just learning, and the exchange that happened between the participants was probably the best aspect of it. And coming up in February is supporting LGBTQ plus survivors. In March is inclusive practices and barriers to access. And in April is an accountability action plan. If your agency finds that you are not meeting the needs, how are you going to do that? You know, what are you going to put in place? If it's Thursday, is there a happy hour happening someplace? Out in the 802 is really working on ensuring that there is a Thursday night happy hour happening someplace in Vermont. So go onto their website, there Facebook now, place. Right? Isn't there like St. Johnsbury and in Burlington? The Lincoln Inn, they yeah. were looking at expanding in St. Albans. 
and they may be looking at you know doing something in central Vermont as well. So I be checking in on their website, Facebook page, see what's happening. Well, you know, Charlie O's is always open to that kind of event. So. Well, I was going to say, so this would just be, you know, that sort of bar takeover, and here we are. <laughs> also, if it's Thursday night and it happens to be the first Thursday of the Mayan Queer Connect does their sapphic story hour, and it's either writers talking about their craft and sort of supporting each other, or it is a writer coming in, such as somebody we might know coming in and talking about Who may or may their the creative process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may not want to admit to it. <laughs> it was a fascinating presentation that Linda did. <laughs> and I kind of broke tradition because the sapphic story hour is supposed to be for women, and, but they let me in. They, they were kind to me. And also, I just want to put a plug out there again that we have more organizations who are offering more programs, support services for our community, such as when Babes reached out and started doing the AA sobriety group in Bethel on weekends. You know, look at who is offering you know, addiction and recovery, um, intimate partner violence, sexual abuse, you know, reaching out to people with disabilities, you know, what is your need, and is there an organization out there that might be able to meet it? I was tempted to say, say that's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you, so. Yeah. All right, so it's to you, honey. Where do you want to go? Tallahassee, Florida. On purpose? Well, <laughs> no. Okay. I think a deja vu moment. <laughs> yeah. no. uh, the last time it was Kentucky, but Louisville. Before we, we go, go to, to Tallahassee, I need to correct a mistake I made. Uh, I said that Mexico needed one more co county or whatever they call it there. I'm sorry, I don't know. State. Um, to be uh, the whole country to be uh, gay marriage, okay? Right. But it turns out that it is the whole country. And so I said it wasn't, and it really is. So there you go. Thanks for stealing my thunder. <laughs> really? You had a story on that? Yeah, the last one. The oh. last state just came through. All right. So well, well done. No, okay. I'm teasing. Well, you can do it. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. So anyway, back to Tallahassee, Florida. Okay. <laughs> Florida lawmakers will move to increase state control over Walt Disney World's oh. private government. Mm -hmm. According to a notice published Friday, the latest development in a feud over a law critics have dubbed Don't, uh, don't Say Gay, the notice posted on the is it Ocelio, Ocelia County website, says that Republican-controlled state house will take up legislature, changing the structure and powers of the Reedy Creek Improvement District, as the 55-year-old Disney government is known as. A bill has not yet been filed detailing exactly what these changes would be under consideration. The notice serves as a procedural step in what has become a closely watched process between Disney and Florida. DeSantis and State House Republicans slammed Disney, saying the entertainment giant had become a purveyor of so-called woke ideologies that are inappropriate for children. There you go. You know, it's really crazy because they're the biggest employer in Florida. I mean... Well, and you know, the sort of taxpayer backstory to that is if they implement the oversight that the Florida governor is asking for, the taxpayers are all of a sudden going to be liable for hundreds of millions of dollars exactly. of expenses because if the state takes over, they need to go in and rebuild the entire infrastructure, fire, Rescue the, yeah, okay. Absolutely, and I don't think Floridians will be happy with this, but we'll see. Amber McLaughlin, the first openly transgender woman, was executed in the U U.S. on Tuesday night in Missouri. McLaughlin was pronounced dead at 6.51 p.m. at the Eastern Reception Diagnostic and Correctional Center 
in Tennessee, according to the Missouri, I mean, in, in Missouri Department of Corrections. She was convicted of first-degree murder in 2006 in the killing of Beverly Gunther, and the judge sentenced her to death after a jury deadlocked on its sentencing decision. Missouri Governor Mike Parson denied clemency Tuesday after McLaughlin, calling McLaughlin a violent criminal. Parson said in the statement Tuesday, Miss Gunther's family and loved ones deserve peace. The state of Missouri will carry out McLaughlin's sentence according to the court's order and deliver justice. So, um, it was his decision. I mean, the court deadlocked. He could have gone either way, and he, he didn't. And on the good news is, Good Morning America co-anchor Robin oh, Robbins, Roberts made a surprise announcement on ABC <laughs> Morning Show Monday, saying she's ready to tie the knot with her girlfriend of nearly 18 years. <laughs> Amber, yes? I you don't want to rush things, you know? I know. It's like, <laughs> like, yeah. I can't commit. It's been 18 years. Amber Lane, I'm hesitating because I haven't said it out loud yet. Okay, I'm saying yes to marriage. Roberts told motivational speaker and author Gabby Bernstein during a conversation about setting intentions for the new year. We're getting married this year, Roberts said. So I have a picture of the couple. Oh, nice. Of 18 years. I read about that, and yeah. it was the, they were interviewing this motivational speaker who sort of prompted, like, what are, what are your intentions for this I'm year? I'm getting and, married. I'm going to get married. Well, <laughs> and I think we keep forgetting that there are strong pockets within our communities oh, I'm one of who, who don't believe in the institution of marriage. It's patriarchal. Right. You know, it's coercive. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. Well, the other thing that she said was, of course, her um, Amber has cancer right now, is going yeah. through treatment, and of course, Robin Roberts Robin had, had breast cancer, had breast cancer think, yeah. and, and various cancers over the years. So I, I, she was basically saying, "I, I was going to wait for time. yeah, might as well do it now." But <laughs> I think she was hesitant, was waiting for when more she of was a clean Ill. yeah, when her partner was ill. Yeah. And so now she's just saying, "Go for it." And then you know, sort of sad news and. Uh, I looked up her age. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, she's 66. Not Martina Navratilova yeah. said Monday that she had been diagnosed with throat and breast cancer. The 18-time Grand Slam singles champion, a member of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, will start treatment this month, and her prognosis is good, her representative said in a statement. This double whammy is serious, but still possible, and I'm hoping for a favorable outcome. The 66-year-old... Navratilova said, it's going to stink for a while, but I'm going to fight with everything I have. So good luck, Martina. I remember watching her and, um, you know, all those Chris people Edward. that played then, you know, it was really great. Billie Jean. Yeah. Um, Chris, Chris, Chris Everett. Chris Everett. Chris Everett. And, yeah. the, um, yeah. you know, this, she started the Women's Tennis League. Oh, anyway. A man arrested on hate crimes after charges. A TikTok video showed him hurling homophobic and racist remarks at a Korean-American man and woman dining at a California in and out burger. Jordan Douglas Kra, 40, of Denver, was taken into custody Monday by San Ramon police and booked at the Mart Martinez Detention Facility on two counts of committing a hate crime. So, and Mara Healy is now officially the first out lesbian government governor in the United States. She was sworn in on Tuesday in Massachusetts. The uh, first person to be governor of the state, she was the first woman to be governor of state, and she and Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll our first pair of women to hold the top offices in any state. So. And I heard she had Brandy Carlisle sing at the inauguration. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, be still my heart. Oh, God. <clears throat> Two Republican Arizona lawmakers are opening the legislative sessions by seeking to restrict drag shows. Senator Anthony Kern has filed one bill 
that would be in drag performances during certain hours, aimed primarily at squelching, squelching drag brunches, and another that would prohibit them on public property or any location where they would be viewed by a minor. Senator John Kavanaugh has chimed in with a bill to ban the use of state funds for drag shows targeting minors. Oh. And now this would be a good person, another good person to have at any event, which is Dolly Parton. <laughs> 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 but that's may, not the trivia answer. <laughs> I, know, I know, I should have thought of that. Um, on Tuesday night's episode of Call Me Cat, Jordan, 67, died in October in a car accident in Los Angeles. Authorities said he may have had a health episode that caused him to lose control of the car, which crashed into a building. The gay actor was beloved for his many TV and movie roles and for the Instagram videos he posted during the pandemic. She sang a portion of Where the Soul Never Dies, which she had recorded with Jordan, and then spoke to her friend. I know usually at a memorial people talk about somebody. Well, I'm going to talk to you because there is that place on the other side and I'm certainly going to see you there, little brother. You left a lot of people here with a lot of precious, precious memories. Everyone loved you, but I doubt many of them loved you more than I did. Oh. So, that's good. And for the last story I'll do right now is Florida again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> Sorry. No. A Florida college student is under arrest after he allegedly used a popular instant messaging and social media platform, Discord, to threaten a mass shooting at Florida State University. Sean Michael Albert, 19, of Winter Park, and a student at Full Sail University was arrested on Tuesday and charged with making an interstate communication to threaten to injure another person. The criminal complaint alleges that on December 16th of last year, Albert posted a picture to a Discord server showing an AK-47 with the following text. 600 West College Ave, Tallahassee, Florida, at 1300 hours, December 17th, 2022, will die. See you there. The threat was posed by user Bloodstained Sand, and the address listed is Florida State University. The threat was reported to the FBI in Orlando, and an investigation was open. FSU increased patrols on campus and Discord voluntarily provided authorities with the relevant information associated with the user making the threat. Albert was quickly identified as the owner of the account, according to authorities. So, okay. So what you got? <laughs> well. Where are you taking us to? We're gonna start in Russia. Okay. Place no. we're never going to. No, 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 nope. nope. Not bringing my vape pens. Not bringing my girlfriend. <laughs> not I'm going. No, nope. not going. Not no. happening. No way. No how. Um, the Russian government has granted its media regulator the authority to block websites containing LGBT propaganda without a court order. According to a decree published on Monday, lawmakers have drafted a bill that allows for the jailing of those who have already been fined under Putin's earlier anti-LGBT law, which banned aiming LGBT propaganda at minors. Under the draft legislation, repeat offenders could be sentenced to up to five years in jail. Speaking of tennis, though, uh, the tennis star, Kasatkina, slams the Russian stance to homosexuality in her coming out video. Remember, mm -hmm. I remember talking about her this summer. She was mm -hmm. ranked. 12th, she's ranked 12th in the world. Russian world number 12, Daria Kasatkina, criticized her country's attitude toward homosexuality in a video published on Monday as she announced she was a lesbian. The 25-year-old's comments come after Russian deputies proposed on Monday a new law which would ban information on all non-traditional sexual relationships in the public sphere. Broadcasting homosexual propaganda to youngsters has been banned in the country since 2013. There are many subjects 
that are even more important than, that are also being banned, so this is not a surprise, she told the YouTube channel. Living in the closet, as they say, is pointless, she said. Well, you know, some of those people are so brave to do what they I do know. living where they we do. We were speculating over the summer, like, you know? did she say that while getting on a plane into exile, or going yeah. to, like as are you going taking, home? Like, are yeah. you are you out of the country as you're making that comment? And then um, I was thinking I've got a roundup of all the things that have happened globally in 2022. All right. I've tried to come up with some highlights. I think maybe what I will do is give you a bit of a teaser, and then we'll come back to more detail. Uh, so. This, and, and I'm going to put check out the website that's flashing on your screen right now. I'm going to give you the website because there's a lot of information. It about was, world. I was talking to Ann and I said, how do you sift through all of this? This is a lot of information, Ann. Yeah. So good job, Ann. Um, so uh, looking at North America, Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, looking at um, how many countries where uh, same-sex marriage became legal, and we're going to talk about uh, some international organizations and decriminalizing sodomy, the fight for equal marriage, um, banning conversion therapy, gay blood donation bans. So we're going to talk about all of those different things. And then there's a section on looking ahead to 2023. So I'll come back to that because there's there, I, have, I want to sift through some of these things. But okay, back to you, Keith. Yeah. Teasers, huh? Teasers. Yeah, yeah. Teasers. That's interesting. It's like a year end wrap up. It is exactly. a year end wrap up, and yeah. I was really impressed by the level of detail. Countries I would never even heard of or knew where <laughs> yeah. they were geographically. So we'll definitely put you, on the you, website. You get out out the globe and spin it, and you know. yeah. yeah. So. We're going to start with the Becca watch. Ooh. Oh. She's finally sworn in. Thank goodness. Took long enough. It did. However, there are no committee assignments yet. Didn't they oh, say she couldn't <clears throat> even like go into her office or like pick well, up I'm, I'm, pick up her That's yes. because of what's a day. Until there until was a speaker, they, yeah. no action could occur. Yeah. Now that there is a speaker, she has moved into the office. <laughs> However, they have disclosed only the committee chairs, not the committee members or the subcommittee members, oh, okay. because that is a panel with the speaker, Republicans, Democrats, hashing it out. And it's going to take time because there's going to be a little drama. Oh. However, there is already the first sort of story about our Becca. And it was, you know, during the orientation and this sort of learning the ropes, she noticed that at lunch they were all sitting in their little cliques. Remind you of high school? Uh -huh. And she said, I'm... Did she go over to the squad? Big, no. <laughs> she, no? Went she went over to the Republicans. She deliberately said, who are the people who are not necessarily who would I seek out and I'm going to come sit with you. That, that's our backup. Well, they, I they all picked up their lunch trays and left. left no, they, she took them by surprise, but they 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 wow. all participated. Yeah. Okay. I hope it wasn't Bob or whatever her name is. I, um, or Good. The moving other on. One. Yeah, I know, but I did <laughs> listen to her when she was when they were doing the roll call for. Um, yep. And they said Ballot, and she said Jeffrey. You could hear her yelling from the back. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was one of those that it was usually the later C's when there were enough votes against that they could say, okay, yeah. speakership hasn't been decided. So ballot B was before that. So you could hear her yelling. Jeffrey. And, yeah. There we go. So our legislature has opened, and it, it wasn't nearly as dramatic. And right now they're sort of doing all of the orientation. Who are the agencies and committees that will be coming in and testifying before committees? What is security? What they need to know. But they have already done the committee assignments. And we have two members of the Rainbow Caucus, oh. our LGBTQ plus legislators, who are chairs of committees. One is Brian Campion in the Senate returning as chair of education. The other is in the House. And it's the Ways and Means Committee, ah, which, is, which is not 
a light committee. Emily Kornheiser nice. is the new chair of Ways and Means, and she has already put out an aggressive agenda at looking at social service agencies and, and how do we truly support Vermonters. The other big bill that's going to be coming up, and it's one of the reasons why I mentioned Brian Campion in education, is there was the Carson versus Macon U.S. Supreme Court decision. This was what came out of Maine mm -hmm. about tax dollars going to parochial or religious-based schools. Maine and Vermont both have in the, our education formulas that if your community does not have a school, you as the parent can, or parent guardian can choose the school to which they are tuitioned. And Vermont has routinely said you could not go to a faith-based or parochial school. The Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. It has to be an equal playing field. So they're going to be coming back in and having to discuss, OK, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to respond to it? And there's several different approaches that are being considered. One is ensuring that all schools that receive public funding have non-discrimination statements and policies as part of their school mandate. The other is restricting the list of schools to which you could be tuitioned based upon a Department of Ed criteria. You know, and one is we're not going to tuition to any private schools. Yeah. which would put an incredible burden on those communities that don't already have it. But looking over our shoulder to New Hampshire, <laughs> did, did you hear this story? Which one? They've already introduced anti-trans legislation. No, I hadn't heard that. There's 11 states that have already introduced bills. Now, during the 2022 legislative session, Nationwide, there were over 160 hostile bills. The 11 that have been introduced thus far are focusing on transgender and health care. Remember reporting on the last show about the company not covering affirmation right. procedures, suit filed by GLAD. Well, it's going along those veins trying to repeal some of the things that are in place or put restrictions on when you can access it, such as there's one state that you cannot engage in any treatment until you reach the age of 26. Oh. So it's, it's, more than it, yeah, it's more than just the minors. After your comments on our last show about the coverage that you know your agency had and you know you wanted to cover a procedure for an employee the insurance company said no i checked with about new hampshire new hampshire has had non-discrimination and parity in insurance since 2017 mm -hmm. the other place where new hampshire has run into problems in the past and last year they had five bills that were introduced and their attorney general said none of those bills would stand up because we have non-discrimination protection based on sexual orientation and gender identity. You would be in conflict with, we would rule against your law. But New Hampshire is one of those states that is a Republican trifecta. I know, the governor, <laughs> The set, yeah, the governor, the House, and the Senate are all Republican controlled. However, it's not by that wide a margin. In their House, which has 400 members, 201 are Republican, 197 are Democrat, and there's two vacant seats. So they really don't have a whole lot of it's wiggle room. With. Right. And their session started in December. So they're already underway. In last year, when we were looking at what was happening regionally, Maine also had hostile bills that were introduced. But Ryan Fecto, who was the Speaker of the House then, is an oh. out gay man. 
and they just <laughs> never came out of committee. And what had ha actually what had happened in New Hampshire last year is they took their five hostile bills and they ordered them to lie, which means we're not even taking them up. Yeah. But and, and I think it's one of the things we need to keep in mind and keep looking for is those pockets within New England that still have that alt right yeah. affiliation. Right. That as much as we would like to say we leave we live in a supportive environment, ain't always all that supportive. Well, we do, but we have to drive through other states. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but even looking at stuff that gets introduced here in Vermont, we've had some hostile things come up. Yeah. But they, they just, just don't get out of committee. They've just been. <laughs> now, I, I wanted to leave on you know a bit of a positive. Bee's Knees General Store yes. and Bakery. <laughs> Yeah, Lawrencetown, Nova Scotia, lesbian couple, went there on their honeymoon, liked it, said, we're moving here. And they opened the Bee's Knees General Store and Bakery. And the community thought this was a wonderful thing. Embrace them. We are so glad that you are here. Well, and? not everybody. <laughs> well, well, wait. <laughs> So, Linda and I are so, like, so, what happened? well, no, Linda knows what happens <laughs> because someone started stealing their rainbow flag. Oh. It, well, but what happened is the community and they reported it to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, with whom we might have some connection, but we won't go there. Um, they reported it, they were investigating it as a potential hate crime. The people in their neighborhood started putting up rainbow flags in support, and they got taken down. And they put up a rainbow flag and a Mi'kmaq flag for the indigenous people. That got taken down. And so the community has continued to reach out to them saying, we're here for you, we are in support. They and they bought them out of food. Well, no, 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 no. The, and, and following Linda's advice, the bee's knees got a camera. <laughs> so yeah, that's Linda's solution to stealing a flag. I'm putting up a camera. So, but what happened is, you know, the community has continued to rally around them. There is a gay straight alliance at a regional school who wrote a letter to them saying, thank you for being here. We are support. We are so appreciative to have adult queer role models in our community. And pastry. And, and, and good pastry. <laughs> <laughs> and and customers came in. They had stickers made with the bakery logo on it, saying "Put this on the." And this was one of the stories that just yeah brought it. They had a parent who drove over an hour to bring their child who had just come out to see the store and to meet these women. Uh. And their response to all of this is they posted on Facebook is the best antiseptic to hate field ignorant acts such as what has occurred is to combat that hate with tolerance, understanding, and show that love indeed will always win. They put out an invitation on their Facebook that whoever it is that is doing this, please come in and talk with us. Let us explain to you why it's important for us to display our flag. We invite you to come in for coffee and a treat. <laughs> I respect that people have their own beliefs, but not at the cost of my human rights. I have a right to be safe in my home and in my business, and that I have a right to create a safe space for other people. Love wins. Love will always win. Hmm. That's a nice story. Wow. Yeah. I wish I could have some nice stories. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, and now to bring down the mood. <laughs> I know. Well, in Louisiana. Oh. Okay, that's a little left of <laughs> Tallahassee, okay. <laughs> People logging into the internet in Louisiana mm. wishing to watch pornography oh. must first upload their driver's license. <laughs> According to the law that went into effect this year, websites that publish pornography are required to verify a user's age before granting access to adult material. 
Users must verify their identity with state's digital driver's license app. Due to advances in technology and the university ability of the internet and limited age verification requirements, minors are exposed to pornography early in age. So, that's Louisiana. Can you imagine, like, showing your license? Oh. Um, if, you go, if you go into an adult store here in Vermont, or if you're going into a smoke shop, cannabis, cannabis you've, got, you've got to produce an, ID. an, an official ID, a state-issued ID, to prove identity and age. I know that's yeah. to be true. <laughs> I'm not going to ask how. I know. Frank Gelati, a gay man who was a titan of Chicago and Broadway theater, has died at the age of 79. A writer, director, and author, Gelati, died Monday night. Uh, he won Tony Awards in 1990 for the best play and best director for adapting John Steinbeck's novel, The Grapes of Wrath, hmm. and directing it on Broadway. The production <coughs> originated at Chicago's Steppenwolf Theater. He was many artists who put Steppenwolf and another Chicago theater, The Goodman, on the map with their innovative material and wealth of talent, including actors John Malkovich, Joan Allen, Laurie Metcalf, Carrie Cole, and Gary Sinise. So. Hmm. That, that's not your light truth. That's quite yeah. a list, yeah. list of yeah. people there, yeah. A new Democratic member of Congress from California <clears throat> is the first out gay immigrant elected yeah. to the body. And he'll be, this is a great story. He will be sworn in on a rare first edition Superman comic. Big O. <laughs> I love that. <sighs> Sentimental personal items. And the Constitution wants Republicans managed to elect a new Speaker of the House. Robert Garcia, who was mayor of Long Beach before yep. November election, announced on Tuesday that he would be sworn in with items of personal significance and will probably sworn into Congress of the U.S. Constitution. Underneath the Constitution will be three items that mean a lot to me personally, he said. A photo of my parents, who I lost to COVID, my citizenship certificate, and an original Superman, number one, Garcia wrote on Twitter along with a photo of the items. So, The New York Times has brought on an anti-LGBT columnist, David French, a former National Review editor who was once an attorney with the Alliance Defending Freedom. The Times announced French is hiring Tuesday, calling him an expert on the law, faith, and politics. But Glad is pointing to his deep history of anti-LGBTQ activism. Glad also notes that he joins the Times after the paper ended its relationship with the claimed trans writer Jenny Boylan last year and brought on trans writer and brought on another anti-LGBTQ columnist, Pamela Paul. So I guess we got to keep an eye on the New York Times, huh? I'm renewing my subscription to the Boston Globe. Oh, no. mm. Upon his death today, Pope Benedict... Well, uh, scanning all television coverage and reading news outlets about it, uh, was struck by the fact that every journalist said that Benedict's leg legacy would be that he was the first pope to resign in 600 years. But um, uh -huh. if the Catholic Church ever opens its vaults of secret documents and, because trans and becomes transparent, it will only further establish that Benedict while he was a cardinal, while Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger was even more complicit in covering up church priest abuse scandal when Germany, in Germany's Munich diocese, with Ratzinger led as archbishop in the 1970s and 80s. He was known for his anti-LGBTQ views. Mm -hmm. uh, the hatred and cues includes his comments around HIV and AIDS in the late 1980s and 87. While the virus raged, rumors about the Catholic Church might implicitly endure the use of common condoms to prevent the spread of the disease. It was immediately shot down by Ratzinger, 
who said that such an approach to protect gay men and gay sex would result in at least the facilitation of evil. So, so much for him. Huh? Those who would soon be facing criminal charges for the roles in the U.S. Capitol insurrection of January 6, 2021 include John Eastman, a legal advisor to Donald Trump, and a longtime anti-LGBTQ plus activist. The U.S. House Committee investigation, the uh, effort to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election, which spurred a riot on the Capitol, decided Monday to make a criminal referral to the Department of Justice, <clears throat> recommending that Eastman be charged with obstruction of an official proceeding and conspiracy to fraud the United States. Of course, now it's up to the DOJ mm -hmm. to decide whether to act on the referral. And another death that happened was Barbara Walters died. And um, she was considered a pretty good LGBTQ ally. She did many things to support the LGBTQ community and put two lesbians on the view. So, And <clears throat> the drag queen Panda Dulce was at the San Lorenzo Library in California when members of the extremist group, the Proud Boys, marched in. They interrupted Drag Queen's story hour where performers read books to kids as a means toward literacy and compassion for others and per Dulce slung insults such as groomer. One man's t-shirt instructed, kill your local pedophile. So on that lovely note, I think we're done. <laughs> In more ways than one. Wow, yeah. how do you right. follow that? Whew. You have a best of list. I do have a best of. Well, I also have some worst of. But um, So around the world, uh, starting with looking at some global trends from international organizations. So the United Nations voted 23 to 17 to 7 to renew the mandate of the independent expert on sexual orientation and gender identity for an additional three years. There's a position that was created in 2016 that has to be renewed every three years. So that was, that's a good news. They also provided retroactive pension benefits for same-sex spouses of its staffers this year. That's significant. Yeah. In 2022, Denmark and Honduras were admitted to the UN LGBTI core group as a pair. I don't know if they're seeing each other now. I don't know what's happening with that. There also was a UN Committee for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. They ruled in a case against uh, Sri Lanka that the country's ban on lesbian sex is illegal discrimination and against their convention. Yeah. In the Commonwealth of Nations, four countries voted to decriminalize gay sex. So pay attention. We're going to these places, Linda. <laughs> write this down. Uh, Antigua, Barbuda, Barbuda, not Bermuda, but Barbuda. St. Kitts, uh, Barbados. Ah, so we can go there. Singapore, yep. Okay. Um, the EU accepted three new candidate countries. So these are European Union aspirants, they call them. Ukraine, mm -hmm. Moldova, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Ah. Yeah. Uh, and the Council of Europe uh, is a body that's meant to promote peace and human rights across the continent. They found, uh, they were the ones that were involved in 2015. There was a case, Oliari and others versus Italy, which was a decision that the convention requires states to recognize same-sex civil unions. Russia has been booted out of the Council of Europe. Bye-bye. <laughs> Why? For denouncing the convention. So they were the single largest country that was opposing same-sex marriage, so they're no longer part of the council. So with Slovenia, Switzerland, and Andorra legalizing same-sex marriage this year, the balance has shifted to 19 states out of 46 to endorse equal marriage. And we may see more, as it says. In the fight for equal marriage, same-sex marriage took a giant leap forward in 2022, becoming legal in four countries. Write this down, Chile, <laughs> Switzerland, Slovenia, and Cuba. Cuba, All right. that's surprising to me. Um, this brings the total number of equal marriage states to 34. Looking ahead, there's a number of states that could legalize same-sex marriage uh, 
uh, Liechtenstein in Thailand. Okay. Uh, we talked about last time, India's Supreme Court uh, yeah. is going to rule on a same-sex marriage case next year. And we're hoping to get a final resolution on the appeals of the same-sex marriage ruling from Aruba and Curacao, which could extend to St. Martin. See, these are all warm, tropical places that... Uh, there's also that court case pending I was talking about last time uh, in the Virgin Islands. Uh, and there's some decisions going on in Panama and Namibia as well. Decriminalizing sodomy. Five states ended their laws criminalizing sodomy. Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Barbados, Singapore, and South Korea. Indonesia introduced a new law criminalizing extramarital sex. Remember, we were talking about that mm -hmm. last time. Yeah. But it's not clear if it applies to gay sex. Interesting. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Just had sex. <laughs> Just had sex. Um, banning conversion therapy. So conversion therapy was banned in the following places in 2022. Canada, France, Greece, New Zealand, Paraguay, Vietnam, Israel, India, and the Mexican states. Uh, Jalisco, Baja California, Hidalgo, Puebla, Sonora, and Nuevo Leon. So those are all places that we can go. Um, let's see. Gay blood donation bans. Bans ended in 2022. Austria, Canada, Cyprus, France, Greece, Ireland, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Malta, and Slovenia. And, and who's not on that list? <laughs> yeah. yeah. During the height, as it says, during the height of the AIDS epidemic, many countries instituted bans on blood donations from gay men and other men who have sex with men and sometimes their female partners. LGBT activists have long called for these bans to be revised to orientation neutral behavior based deferral right. policies. That's a mouthful. For example, some call for anyone who is celibate or monogamous to be allowed to donate. Is it, how do you. <laughs> How do, you, how do you attest for that? While those who have had recent new sexual partners are deferred. <laughs> so in summary, these are the major highlights. Uh, decriminalized sodomy. Uh, Same-sex marriage passed in Mexico, the last seven states. Yes. Uh, Slovenia, Andorra, and Cuba. Same-sex marriage coming into effect in Chile and Switzerland. Recognition of foreign marriages in American Samoa. Okay, you can go there. Uh, Same-sex marriage re-banned. They did it again. This Bermuda time. and the Cayman Islands. Bermuda has been going back and forth. What is Both that? of them have. That is about. And has repeatedly <laughs> reported on. Well, well they first said they yes. It. Now they're now going they no. Now they're, now they're repealing that. <laughs> yeah. uh, registered partnerships. Latvia, numerous Japanese uh, prefectures and municipalities. Same-sex couple adoption and parenting. The Faroe uh -huh. Islands, Slovenia, Andorra, Cuba, Liechtenstein. There's a, there's a pattern here. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Croatia, Chile, Switzerland, and the Mexican states, Quintana Roo and Baja California, sir. Conversion therapy ban, we talked about that. Anti-discrimination laws. Antigua and Barbuda, Spain, and the U.S. states of Nevada, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Gays allowed in the military. Kazakhstan <laughs> and South Korea. That seemed legal gender change. Uh, Suriname, Lithuania, El Salvador, Venezuela, Andorra, Switzerland, Slovakia, Lithuania, and the Mexican states Sinaloa and Zacatecas. End of gay blood ban. Canada, Ireland, Austria, Liechtenstein, the US, France, Greece, Cyprus, Slovenia, Malta, Lithuania. Looking ahead to 2023, likely to decriminalize, mo voted most likely to decriminalize sodomy uh, in declining order of probability. St. <laughs> Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica, Grenada, Cook Islands, Namibia, Sri Lanka, plus the U.S. states, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, and Minnesota are likely to strike their defunct laws from their books. Likely to pass same-sex marriage. Aruba, Curacao, St. Martin, Liechtenstein, India, Virgin Islands, Thailand, Bolivia, Czechia, Panama, Namibia, Greece, and Japan. Likely to pass civil unions. Ukraine, Lithuania, uh, Virgin Islands. 
likely to ban conversion therapy. Mexico, Spain, Ireland, Netherlands, Belgium, Colombia, Norway, Austria, Iceland, Sweden, Finland, the UK, the Australian <laughs> states of Western Australia and Tasmania, and the US states of Minnesota and Michigan. Likely to end gay blood donation, Iceland, Switzerland, and the US. Same-sex couples can now marry in 34 nations and in 47 other discrete jurisdictions around the world. Again, there's a whole list of all of this. So if people are interested, we're going to put the website up on that. So okay. a lot of good things happening. Good job. I sort of edited out all the murder and mayhem and the person that was found <laughs> in a metal box. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. All those stories are, you know, well. And can, can bring those back. Like we should have edited out Linda's story on the last episode. <laughs> Yeah. Well, interesting, but not, not LGBTQ particularly, but I don't know if everybody's probably heard that some of the men in Afghanistan have stopped working because um, of the Taliban restricting women being able to go to college in the workforce. Right. Mm. So they were that on was strike. kind of good news mm. uh, in a way, I suppose. Mm. So anyway, uh, we're almost out of time. We have two so minutes. We need the trivia so, question. Mm-hmm. The, the parent-child combination who both had LGBTQ plus, a LGBTQ plus parent and an LGBTQ plus spouse, who else could it be but Judy Garland and Liza Minnelli? Yep. Liza, her father, Vincent Minnelli, was Judy's second husband. Liza herself was married to Peter Allen and David Guest. And to say that they are legends and icon would be understating the impact that they have had on our cultures. Absolutely. So with that. You want me to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow? Could yeah, you? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Teresa. Resist.